Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be the continuation of the Judges series. We're going to take a look at chapter 6, where we left off. Before I got into the stars thing, and by the way, I've got a, um, a video on Telegram that uh, I would prefer not to put on you-know-what tube because would probably be removed and get a two-week strike, you know, probably. Um, I have a channel on Odyssey, but it's not getting any views. So, and somebody pointed out to me that uh, the same video that I put on Telegram that I also put on Odyssey is not available. Now, when I go to my Odyssey channel as the creator, I can see the video. It's there. But when I go to a different method of looking at it where I'm not signed in different computer the video is unavailable same uh, same website I mean not website but uh, the same web address I could type that same at web address into two different uh, ways you know signed in or unsigned in you know it's the same thing I mean I'm not doing it wrong it's being shadow banned. So Odyssey is garbage. Just like Gab is garbage. Uh, Telegram is also controlled, but I guess they haven't discovered my uh, hatefulness yet. So I thought I would, you know, point that out. But yeah, I'm, I'm posting some interesting videos on telegram that I can't post on you know who tube so let's continue let's go with judges chapter 6 verse 1 and the children of Israel did evil did evil in the sight of the Lord and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years why seven? Yeah, uh, a Sabbath, right? And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel because, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. So here it is. These people are having to, to hide. I mean, they're having to hide. You know, made them dens which are in the mountains, caves, and strongholds. So Midian is strong. Israel's weak. And so it was when Israel had sown, sown what? Their crops, their food. That the Midians came up, and the Amalekites, and the children of East, even they came up against them. Now, who are the Amalekites? The Amalekites are the descendants of Esau and Amalek. And God didn't like Amalek. Matter of fact, uh, you know, this is why I hate demon nominational Christianity, so-called, because well, they lie about everything. I mean, really, they lie about everything. I mean, uh, you know, God loves everybody. Well, he don't love Amalek, and he don't love Esau. All right, Balaam, the prophet, in Numbers 24.20, And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations. 
but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. But his latter end shall be that he perish forever. Oh, but, but that's changed, Chaplain Bob. Jesus came and he loves everybody now. And all Amalek has to do is believe and he's going to be saved. Uh, I don't think so. In Exodus 17, 16. For he said, because the Lord hath sworn... The Lord has sworn, the Lord swore to himself, I, the Lord, swear to the, swear to, I, God, swear to God, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war, war with Amalek from generation to generation. Does that sound like uh, there's going to be a peace treaty? Uh or an armistice no no and people don't even people don't even understand why god hated esau i it's sad it's sad and then i get the so-called black hebrews on my channel saying yeah why do you you bees you bees amalek you be esau uh you mean the people that built all the churches, the people that printed the Bibles are God's enemies? Really? Where'd you learn that? Uh, living in a mud hut? Really? You know, they don't even they don't even begin to grasp how wonderful to have a written languages. Somebody can take their lifetime of knowledge on a subject and put it into a book. And in a matter of, oh, I don't know, hours, you can learn a lifetime's worth of knowledge. But, but they don't even appreciate that. They don't appreciate written language very very few do very few I mean it's it's I can't tell you how much stuff I've learned from books and I've read a lot of books in my life of course I never really considered myself a bookworm but so all right let's go back to judges verse uh Chapter 6, verse 9. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza and left no substance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass. For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. For both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. So I guess they uh, either carted off all the food, or maybe they burned it or destroyed it. I don't know. Either way, verse 6 uh Judges 6.6 6. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. You know, whoever divided the Bible up into numbers and chapters and verses, I believe totally with all my heart that they were divinely inspired. I really do. Judges 6.6, 6. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Well, guess what? What's going on in Australia? What's going on in Canada, France, Germany, and the USSA? We got problems. 
and everybody thinks, oh, if we just have a protest or we just have an election. No. People need to cry unto the Lord. But we're not there yet. Everybody's still fat and happy. You know, prices are going up because they're just printing worthless paper money. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be greatly impoverished because of the children of the devil. Oh, you want to see another uh, 666? Oh, I love this one. How about John? The book of John. And by the way, there's uh, there was two Johns in the Bible, at least two. One was John the Baptist, who was beheaded by Herod. And then there was John, the, the apostle that Jesus loved, who was with the, you know, the book of Revelation. So, John, chapter 6, verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples, Christ, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. They, ran, they left. John 6, 6, 6. <laughs> I mean, you can't make this stuff up, people. You know? I, I really, I, I'm amazed. I, I really am. All right, so. Judges 6 and 6. And the and Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land you see the Canaanites were devil's kids they went into the land evidently Satan and his angels knew where Israel was going to end up and they decided to go there first and try to take it over and keep it. But what was nice for Israel was they had, the Canaanites had built houses. They had built cities. They had planted fruit and nut trees and crops and gardens. And God said, go in and take it. It's yours. I give it to you. But uh, the modern church, so-called world, boy, I'll tell you what, they won't touch that stuff with a 10-foot theological pole. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell, but you know what those uh, you know what gut, goats do, don't you? They but, but ye have not obeyed my voice. I told you, but you wouldn't listen. Verse eleven. Oh, and by the way. Think about this and apply it to modern times. You know, there's a reason why the white Western world is going to be oppressed. There's a reason. Read the book of Judges. It explains it all. And by the way, um, the 144,000, what do you think they're going to be doing? 
they're going to be doing the same type of things that the prophets were doing back in the Old Testament time. They're going to be saying, thus, probably, probably, thus saith the Lord. They're going to be evangelizing. Their uh, message is probably not going to be listened to very much, but, uh, you know, because you're going to have the false prophet doing miracles just like Christ did. But uh, that's the way it goes, right? So, verse 11. And there came an angel of the Lord. Ah, an angel of the Lord. And sat under an oak, which was in Ophrah. Not Oprah Winfrey, no. Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash, the uh, uh, Beers, Beersite. Beers are right. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. So, yeah. All right, so Gideon was threshing wheat. You know, the plant grows, and then you got the kernels of wheat, and you got to shake it to get the kernels off. And then the rest of the plant that we can't really eat you dispose of it but you know here it is he's having to hide to prepare you know food for his family so Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him the Lord is with thee thou mighty man of valor <laughs> so, yeah, uh, and I'm, I can only imagine uh, what he was thinking, you know, here it is, you got this mighty being that probably glows in brightness, you know, verse 13, and Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Modern application. But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the, um, well, you know, those from Africa and those from, yeah, yeah, you get the idea. Do you know that China has more submarines than the United States? Yeah. And everybody says, oh, well, they're poor quality. Uh, are you sure? Our buddies in the Middle East, I'm sure, sold them or gave them all the technology from, you know, Germany, which Germany knows a couple things about submarines. Uh, you know, because uh, they, they're our friends in the Middle East were uh, got a bunch of those subs from Germany, and I'm sure they sold or shared one with their friends in China, being that they're all buddies. Do you know in the year 1900, 122 years ago, China's population was. 400 million. Today, China's population is over three times that. Almost four. Almost four times that. They have about 1.7 billion, which is uh, 1,700 million. So their population's almost four times what it was 122 years ago. Matter of fact, China's population is about the same as the entire world's population was 122 years ago, 1900. China has the ability to field an incredibly large army. Incredibly large. Huge. We've given them all the technology. I mean, let's face it. If, you know, their kids are, 
Their, their students are all over the West Coast, California State University System, Washington State University System, Oregon State University System, engineering, you know, aeronautical engineering, marine engineering, electrical engineering. And you know, if you can build an airplane, you can build a missile. And if you can build a boat, you can, you know, why not a submarine? So, yeah. I mean, I was going to college in uh, the late 80s. And even back then, there were Chinese national students at the college that I was attending. Yeah. So, it's, this stuff's been going on for a while. The Lord's plans don't really change. They really don't. So, Gideon says, But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the, the Chinese and the Edomites and the, yeah. You get the idea. Verse 14. And the Lord looked upon him. Now, uh, I know I've mentioned it in the past, but uh, sometimes the angel of the Lord is a form of the Lord. I know it sounds weird. Um, I believe this is Jesus in his pre-human form. Because sometimes this angel of the Lord will speak in the first person and as the Lord. So here it is. He's talking to the angel of the Lord. And then in verse 14, it says, And the Lord looked upon him. So how can this angel of the Lord be called the uh, and the Lord looked upon him? But that's a whole other study in and of itself. Uh, sometimes the angel of the Lord says, The Lord bless thee, or I will bless thee. So, you know, an angel doesn't have that authority. So, I'm believing this is Christ before he was born as a human. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? Hmm. Okay. 15. And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Huh. King David, future King David, was the least in his father's house. Sometimes the Lord doesn't send the strongest. And uh, Manasseh was one of the, um, the double tribes of Joseph. Ephraim and Manasseh. My family is poor in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee, and bring forth my present, and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. All right, I'm going to wait here for you. And Gideon went in and made ready a kid and unleavened, unleavened cakes of an ephah of flour, the flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and brought it out unto him under the oak, and presented it. And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. 
And then, uh, then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up fire, fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. So this was a, uh, a burnt offering. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. So it is possible the Lord was speaking to him directly, and this angel of the Lord was a mere angel, but I... I I could be wrong about, I could be wrong. It could be either way. It could be an angel and the Lord or the angel of the Lord being the Lord. I'm not 100% sure, but throwing that out there. Uh, then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day, it is yet in Ophrah of the uh, Beazerites. Uh, all right, Jehovah, they, that's one rendering of the Lord's name. Some people say Yahweh, Yahweh. Uh, I, I don't know if anybody really knows how to pronounce it. And Shalom means peace. So God of peace, basically. And uh, Jerusalem... Jerusalem, city of peace. Well, when Christ returns, anyways. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people don't... Uh, you know, the thing is, English language didn't have modernized spelling until... Um, I think it was the 1828 Webster's Dictionary in the United States. I'm not sure about the UK. Uh, England's a little different, but sometimes they would spell a word three, four different ways. Sounded basically the same. So, and then people will say, oh, it's not Jesus because there was no J back in the day. Yeah. So, I guess Jerusalem doesn't exist, right? Because there was no J back then. 25. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old. Ah, oh, seven years old. Remember, they were being oppressed by Midian seven years. So this bullock was about the same age as the time they'd been oppressed by the Midianites. So take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal. What was Baal? Baal was the, uh, it's a generic name for Lord, but it was associated with Satanism. A false God. Throw down the altar of Baal that thy father hath, and cut down the grove that is by it. So, uh, yeah. Cut down the sacred trees. Their sacred trees. And the grove is, uh, witches love the groves. They love their little nature, their little Gaia. So the Lord said to cut it down. Why? Because it had been dedicated to the devil. Verse 26. And build an altar upon unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this of this of this rock in the ordered place, and take the second bullock and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove which thou shalt cut down. Hmm. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as the Lord had said unto him. And so it was because he feared his father's household and the men of the city that he could not do it by day, that he did it by night. 
28. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down, and the grove was cut down that was by it. And the second bullock was offered upon the altar that was built. And they said one to another, Who hath done this thing? Hey, wait a minute. Our altar to our God and the groves dedicated to the devil is gone. Who did this? And when they inquired and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, hath done this thing. Then the men of the city said unto Joash, Bring out thy son that he may die, because he hath cut down the altar of Baal, and because he hath cut down the grove that was by it. And Joash said unto all that stood against him, Will ye plead for Baal? Oh, really? You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna fight for uh, Baal? Will ye save him? He that will plead for him, let him be put to death whilst it is yet morning. If he be a god, if Gaul, if Baal be a god, let him plead for himself, because one hath cast down his altar. Oh yeah, let your false god come down here and argue about this. Think about it. Therefore on that day he called him Jerubbabal, saying, Let Baal plead against him, because he hath thrown down his altar. Yeah, let Satan let Satan come here and argue about the, the altar that's destroyed. So Jerubbabal means a uh, contender with Baal or let Baal plead. So yeah, contend. You know, when you're contending with something, you're fighting it. So all right, so uh let's see. Verse 32, therefore on that day he called him Jerubbabal, saying, Let Baal plead against him, because he had thrown down his altar. Then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together and went over and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. Boy, that valley Jezreel had seen a lot of bloodshed. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, and Abiezer was gathered after him, and he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him, and he sent messengers unto Asher, and unto Zebulun, and unto Naphtali, and they came up to meet him. Now these are tribes of Israel. You know, Manasseh, Asher, Zebulun, Naphtali, they're all tribes of Israel. But you'd never know that with demon nominational Christianity because they're all Jews. Every single one of them, they're all Jews. And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said, now here's Gideon, he's going to ask for a miracle. Behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor, and if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said. So he's going to put some wool on the floor, and if it's wet from dew and dry on the, you know, the, and the land around it is dry, he'll say, okay, I, I believe you. Verse 38, And it was so, for he rose up early on the morrow, and thrust the fleece together, and wring the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thine anger be hot against me, and I will speak but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry only upon the fleece, and upon all the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night, 
for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. So Gideon asked for a sign. He got two of them. Well, actually three if you count the, uh, the fire coming out of the rock. You know, I imagine Gideon is like going, oh boy, uh, why would the Lord, Lord God in heaven pick me, you know? Why me? You know, sometimes the Lord picks the most unlikely people. Now look at Peter. Peter was a fisherman, never went to Bible college, and he was sent unto the children of Judah, you know, the scholars that went to Bible college. And then Paul, who had studied all that stuff, he'd, he'd, went, he'd been to Bible college, he had a doctor's degree, probably, if you ask me. Um, he was sent to the, the Greeks, the unlearned. So the unlearned went to the learned, Peter to the Judah, and Paul the learned went to the unlearned, the Greeks. You know, if it had been me, I would have sent Paul to the Judah, and I would have sent Peter to the Greeks. But that's not the way the Lord works. And, uh, I mean, after all, he sent me to be a Bible teacher. <laughs> I tell you what, if you'd have known me in high school, you wouldn't believe, you wouldn't believe it. You would never have believed. Somebody told me when I was in high school that I, I would be teaching the Bible. I would have probably cussed them out and told them where to go and not heaven either. Yeah, the other place. Yeah. Yep. Demonominational teachings almost, uh, they destroyed the faith that I had back in the day. The Billy Goat Grams and yeah. So what can you do? Sometimes the Lord's plans are a little little different than our plans. So oh well. All right, well, this is the end of Judges chapter six. And um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. The God the Father and his only begotten Son. Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.